Now the first group we're going to be talking about are our snakes, and this snake is a nice captive snake. It makes you really good pet. That's why we like to bring this particular one along, because it's a great example of a nice starter pet reptile. Now this is a ball or a broil python. That's sort of a strange name for a snake, a ball python. Anybody know where it gets that name, ball python? Think he likes basketball? He curls into a ball, exactly right. Well, these guys don't get really big, they only get about five feet long, making them a great captive snake, a great starter animal. They're also pretty inexpensive to house, care for, and easy to, and easy to take care of. Our next snake comes from Central America, and this guy is a boa constrictor. Her name is Ruby, and Ruby is around seven feet long, but they can get to be quite a bit bigger than this. These guys can get to be over 12 feet, making them a very large constricting snake. The head and neck, that's that front portion here on the snake. The tail is the last little bit. The rest of the animal is the animal's body. And it has the same types of organs and body systems inside of it as you and I do inside of us. Just in a different, longer, and more stretched out format. It is a lizard because it has the things that snakes did not. Who remembers what snakes were missing? What were they missing? A body? No, they have a body. What were snakes missing? Ears, and what else? Ears and eyelids. Snakes are missing ears and eyelids. And they have a nice long tail. That long tail is used for protection. They can use that to whip another animal. If another animal were to come and try to attack it and try to grab them by the tail, first thing a lizard will do is probably whack them with that tail, try to scare them off. Now this next big guy, his name is Jellybean. And Jellybean is a red tegu from South America. Now, tegus are a lizard that's found in the Americas. I think of them as filling the same ecological niche as animals like monster lizards. Monster lizards are all old world animals. These guys are new world. They're found in the Americas. Now, he is a red tegu, and they don't get much bigger than this. They get to be about four feet long. And put them on uh, whole prey, whole rodents, lean meats, fruits, and vegetables. Since then, he's lost a lot of weight. He's been doing very, very well for us. We've had him for about eight years now, and we did get him as an adult, so my guess would be that he is in his late teens, maybe even his 20s. You can tell he's an aquatic turtle because, first of all, his shell is nice and smooth and streamlined, allowing him to cut or glide through the water with less resistance. You'll also notice he's got some skin between his toes. He is an African sulcata, or an African squirthi tortoise. Now, he's probably about 15 years old, but they can live to be quite old. They can live 80, 90, even longer than that. And he is um, the third largest species of tortoise. The only larger tortoises are the Galapagos or the Aldabra. He is the largest mainland tortoise coming from the mainlands of Africa. He's also a burrowing or digging tortoise. And this guy can dig very deep. He can dig deep in extensive burrows. They go down as far as 12 feet. He used that shell is also a living part of the turtle. A turtle can never climb out of the shell. He is born with a shell and the shell continues to grow throughout his life. The animal ate out the soft parts or he just rotted away and all that was left was that hard shell. But when you find an empty turtle shell, you're never going to find the turtle that goes with it because that turtle is no longer alive. This is one of our American alligators. Her name is Lucy. Lucy is probably about four or five years old. I'm going to guess that because alligators grow about a foot a year and she's a little over four feet long. So a good guess might be four to five. There's no real way to tell. You never know for sure because a lot depends on how they were kept and how much they were fed. Now Lucy was once someone's pet and we got her as a, um, as a rescue where we get most of our animals. In fact, it's very rare that anyone should ever be killed or injured by an alligator. There's only been about 20 people killed by alligators in over 60 years. So it's very, very rare, but accidents do happen, especially when people start feeding alligators. You guys think it's a good idea?